Hey everyone, my name is Christian Rowe and I'm so excited to get to share my devotional thought with you all this morning. I hope you all had a great Easter weekend, even if it's not these circumstances that we would have imagined for ourselves a few short months ago. The truth is we are in a time of waiting. We are waiting for a miracle to take place, for God to move, for the Spirit to speak, for the kingdom to be brought about in ways that we could have never imagined. And it all looks very different. Our classes look different. Our relationships look different. Our plans look different. And for many of us, our faith looks different. You see, we're living in a time where our faith is very malleable. It has the potential to be strengthened by our efforts to get to know God in this season. Or we can end up neglecting it because we are so consumed with fear and worry and anxiety. And that is why I think it's important, now more than ever, for us to remember. Our faith is strengthened when we remember who we are in Christ. Psalm 42 is the first psalm of Book 2. It is written by the sons of Korah who were descendants of the Levitical priest and who served in some musical aspect of temple worship. Psalm 42 specifically was written at a time much like our own, where the voices of the world seem to drown out God's presence, where we are consumed with fear, anxiety, worry, and doubt. And it is in this context that the psalmist begins with a powerful image of their desire for God in verse 1. The text says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. This psalm begins with a sense of desperation for the living God. He doesn't know where God is or what he's doing. He says he cries when people ask him, where is your God? But it's in this time of darkness and doubt and uncertainty that the psalmist chooses to remember. He remembers how he used to feel about God, how he would joyfully shout of praise in the temple courts and in God's house. Today's devotional is about remembering. It's about remembering who we are and whose we are. In fact, this is a task that God gave to the Israelites time and time again throughout the Old Testament. Why? Because they continued to forget what God had done and who they were in his sight. Just as Israel was God's beloved possession, his chosen nation, his royal priesthood, his joyful inheritance, so are we. And it is necessary that we remember those truths about who we are in Christ, especially in a time like this where our identity seems to be wrapped up by how much toilet paper we have in our house or whether or not we have the coronavirus. And you may think it's silly that I'm suggesting such things could become our identity, but if we're not careful, this can very quickly be become a reality. When I think of this idea to, to remember who you are, it's, it's hard for me to think about that without uh, calling to mind that famous scene from The Lion King. Or Mufasa says to his son Simba, Remember who you are. You are my son, the one true king. Remember who you are. And in this powerful command, Mufasa is not merely telling Simba to remember all the experiences that they had together. He is telling Simba to remember who he is in Mufasa. That he is Mufasa's son. That he is the prince ready to inherit the entire kingdom. And in the same way, God calls us not to merely remember our past experiences, but to remember him and to place our identity in him and to, to acknowledge how he has moved in and through us throughout our lives. And it's as his children that we are that he has deemed us to be the pinnacle of his marvelous creation and desires to give us every good and perfect gift. 
if we walk in faithful obedience. Many of you may not know this about me, but my dad is in the Air Force. And he was deployed throughout the year in, in 2016. And it was during that year that he wrote me a letter that I believe reflects God's desires for his children. The letter says, I am in awe of the person you are becoming. Honestly, as a father, my hopes for you and all of my children are rather basic. I want you to be happy, but I know that isn't always possible. I want you to love the Lord, but I know that at times your faith will be tested. I want you to love with all your heart, but I know at some point it will be broken. I want you to have character, but I know that will sometimes require personal courage. I want you to work hard, but I know sometimes that will require a sacrifice. I want you to always do your best, but I know sometimes that won't be enough. I want you to remain true to yourself, but I know sometimes the world will want you to change. I want you to dream big, but I know some dreams will go unachieved. I want you to be loyal, but I know others will betray you. I want you to be safe, but I know sometimes you will have to take risks. I want you to be different than the world, but I know there will be pressure to conform. I want you to be humble, but I know pride is a powerful temptation. I want you to be obedient, but I know disobedience will always be appealing. I want you to be who you are becoming. It is a love given by God that saves us and keeps us. And it is that love that I have for you. So with that in mind, that we are God's children, and that he wants such good and perfect gifts for us, what can we do in this season? To provide one suggestion, we could keep a prayer journal. That now we could document our prayers each night, uh, and enabling us to look back to remember how God has answered our prayers. A second suggestion is that we could thank him each night for three to five very specific things that we often take for granted. This could be something as small as the, the air that we breathe, or as complex as the relationship you share with your parents. No matter what it is, it's important for us to figure in remembering. Because our faith is strengthened when we choose to remember who we are in Christ. Unfortunately, we live in a time right now where it is very easy to forget. Yet when we make the decision to actively live in remembrance, we are promised deliverance, justification, and salvation. And it is with this truth that I prepare to pray with you all part of a prayer written by Martha Carroll entitled, Help Me to Remember. Pray this with me. Gracious God, I long to rest in your love, but some days I get so distracted by all that surrounds me. Friends or family members whose lives are not working, who are struggling with debt or addictions or loss, who are living in loveless relationships filled with despair. Often I have no words. There are no words. I have only the gift of my presence, my love, and my prayers. But too often these days my presence is insincere, my love shallow, my prayers thin and frail. I forget that you are with them and with me. I forget that in you all things are possible. I forget to rest, to trust, to depend on you. Forgive me, God. Remind me, even as I pray, that you are already at work in the lives of those around me. Help me to remember that just as a seed is planted in the dark, safe soil so that new life can grow, seeds of a different sort are sown in us, and may well give birth to hope, love, trust, and new life, if only we allow them to be nourished by the gift of your Spirit. Such growth is not mine to direct or force or manage. Hear my prayers, dear one, for all of us. In the name of Christ, who came to earth and chose to be one with us, and knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen.